Facebook group today. I actually posted a, a thing. One of our favorite folks, Peter Beatty of Video Revolver, has put out another new set of templates at a stupid kind of price. It's called Instant Video Templates. And what I want to do is I just want to touch on a few points for these kinds of things because you can buy PowerPoint templates and then you can modify them and then somehow magically end up with all kinds of professional videos. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess if, if you're a professional with PowerPoint and you know how to do all this stuff. Well, what I want to do is uh, just kind of touch on a few things that... Um, will make it a little easier and, and stuff for folks. So, But these are pretty nice. They're not too bad. Let me give you a couple of quick points here. First of all, the reason I, I like to buy some of these templates isn't really to try to use them the way that they are. What you'll find is that there are often just a lot of different resources in there. Okay, So this happens to be Instant Video Templates version 3, and I've downloaded everything. So here's kind of what I like about these template packs. If I can pick them up for dirt cheap, and when I say dirt cheap, I pick this up for like eight bucks and change. What I actually ended up with, though, is, yeah, I got some PowerPoint templates and stuff like that, but I also get all of these different graphics, okay? And I get background music tracks, and I get sound effects, Okay, so I don't even know what these are here. So here's a machine gun. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so anyway, you get all of these different assets. So that's kind of cool. And uh, that's one of the things that I kind of enjoy about it. These particular sets of templates also have uh, like some nice characters and stuff like that. So let's just take a quick look here. Okay, so these are interesting. Kind of cutesy or whatever. You see a lot of people trying to make these animated, hello, this is Jill. Jill has a problem. You know, oh, gosh. Right? Those are going to get so old so fast. But still, from the standpoint of my library of stuff, yeah, I get a whole bunch of good content here, even without cracking open a, a PowerPoint deck. Right? So that's kind of my first level take on it. And then to get beyond that, what I wanted to do is just put together a couple of things here. And let's just go, go through these a little bit. So when you find these templates out there, and the ones from Video Revolver, Peter Beatty, are just one example. that You can find them on the Warrior Forum. You can find, like, everywhere. Everybody and their dog is, like, putting these templates out there. Well, here's a couple of tips that I have for modifying those and things to look out for. Okay, tip number one. When you open up one of your PowerPoint templates, save it as something else, please. Think of the template that you downloaded as your master copy. If you start mucking around with that and you mess up some of the animation or something like that, then you just caused yourself a whole bunch of work. Okay, so make sure you open up the slide deck and the first thing you do is to save as to a project folder and a file name before making changes. So for example, I'll open up the PowerPoint deck, I'll save as, I will create a folder for the project I'm working on and save it in there with a descriptive file name. Okay, everybody with me? Don't mess up your masters. It's bad, it's very bad. The next tip I have is to use a video editor. The other thing that a lot of people get hung up on is they'll buy one of these templates and they'll try to make a complete and entire professional video using just say PowerPoint. Well, you can't really do that. I mean, you can, but it's really difficult. PowerPoint is great for creating animations, for creating presentation content. That's what it does. But as a video editing program, it really kind of sucks because it's not designed to do that. And you're going to run into a few problems that are very easily fixed if you only incorporate some other tools that are more appropriate for the job. Okay, Adding background music is a great example, and I'll show you that in just a second. 
people try to embed their background music in their PowerPoint slides. Don't do that. It's a nightmare to try to control when it starts, when it stops, when it fades in, when it fades out. You need that kind of control. Well, in Camtasia, you just drop it on an audio track and do whatever the heck you want to with it. It's a matter of using the right tool for the right job. All right, so here's one of my pet peeves, and I call it What the Font. How many of you, just go ahead and let me know in the chat box, have ever bought a template and opened it up and it looked all kinds of wonky, especially the text? And why is that? Because you don't have the font installed. Missing fonts in templates is incredibly confusing and a complete pain in the butt. The thing is that a lot of these people don't include the fonts as even downloads. So you have to go find them. And I'll go ahead and uh, show you an example of that in just a second. Here's the thing, though. For templates, what creators should do is to use open source fonts, in other words, free to use fonts, and they should include those in the decks themselves. And I'll kind of show you how you can do that yourself in case you want to move your templates from machine to machine and not have to embed all the fonts. So I'm just going to jump out of here for a second. Let's go over here. Okay, I'll show you a quick example. So here, let's open up one of the slide decks that comes with the Instant Video Templates 3. We'll open this guy up. This is called a, a kinetic text presentation. So first thing you might notice is that, well, that looks a little weird right here. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And I don't know, some of this just doesn't look quite right. right? So here's the way you can tell if you have a problem. So I'm going to click on one of these text boxes here. And if you look up in the font window here, you'll see it is Pacifico is the font that is used in this template. Well, if I hit the drop down here, you'll also notice that down here, it, it is blank to the left of the font. See up here where it says TT? That stands for true type. Uh, these are open, uh, I forget, open something fonts. But it means that these fonts are installed. If you open this up and you don't see anything to the left of the font name, it means the font is not installed on this computer. Okay, so let's click on another one here. So this is called Oswald. So I'll drop down here and you'll notice that Oswald is not installed. Now you might also notice that, well, there's text here, but what PowerPoint does is it just makes its next approximate guess, its best guess at something that might uh, kind of sort of look okay, right? But Trust me, Oswald font right here looks a whole lot better than this, and the Pacifico font looks better than this. So the problem ensues that then you have to go, you have to Google search the Pacifico font, and here I found it on Font Squirrel, and you download it, and then you have to unzip it, and you have to install it on your machine. Well, yeah, that's just kind of a pain. So once you have the fonts installed and stuff, what you can do is, and I don't know why the creators of these templates don't do that. So let's say that I didn't want to go through this exercise again because I have a laptop and I want to work on these slides on my laptop. Does anybody have more than one computer that they work on their PowerPoint stuff with? So in order to not have to go through the pain we just went through, a lot of people don't know this. If you go to File save as and what you'll notice is that there's a little drop down here called tools you click that you go to the save options and you see right here it says embed fonts in this file and what you want to choose is to embed all characters now this doesn't work for all fonts but it it works uh, for true type and open type fonts I've had varying degrees of success with this, but it's definitely worth a try. And if I was creating templates, I would make sure that I only used fonts that could be embedded, right? So that would be the, the key there. So now when I say OK and I can save it as an embedded version of this, 
then life is going to be good and I'll be able to open it up. So here's kind of the, the rundown there. If you want to save the, the fonts once you've installed them to be able to use them on different machines, then you just go through that little process. One of the biggest things that's a problem, though, is that, and if you've tried to do this, you kind of know this, is that timing is the issue. Almost all of the templates and stuff you get will have timing to them. So if I go into slideshow mode here, stuff's going to happen. And if you just try to use those timings as they exist, then you're probably just going to end up with something that either goes too fast or too slow. So one of the tips that I do is when I go to record this slideshow, I almost always will uncheck this box and go into record slideshow and then I can create my own timing. What you'll find is that we'll just let me just try it. Okay, so yeah, see I'm not really doing anything and it's still just kind of going. Right? I'm not clicking anything, I'm not doing anything. It's all based on the timings that are already embedded in the slide. Okay, and that'll make you nuts if it's not timed the way you want it. Well, all you have to do is uncheck this. And for your project file, the other thing that I almost always do is I will go in and I will clear timings also. That way, when I go into record slideshow, then I'm driving not the pre-existing timings. Okay, so if you've ever gone in to record your slideshow and stuff just starts happening for no apparent reason, then that's the problem. And a lot of people, you know, they just don't know that and it, it'll make you insane. Yeah, I do that before I record my slideshow too. I, I clear the timings. And then like I think I mentioned before, another thing that a lot of these templates have is this background music clip that plays through the duration of the slides. I don't use that. I ditch that. Because, again, I'll go ahead and record my animations and export them as a video, pull that into Camtasia, and then drop the slide videos on the timeline and put my music track underneath. And then I can do whatever I want with it. I can fade it in, I can fade it out, I can move it, I can trim it, I can, you know, just so easily exactly on the timeline the way I want it. Okay, so do that instead might help you out. And then one more thing here, and this holds true especially with complex animations. If you don't know about something called the selection pane, let me see if I can just find an example. Here's a good example right here. So let's say I want to change this text called kinetic. Well, I'm clicking and you can't really get to it. I mean, your options might be to use the tab key and tab, 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 tab. Okay, now I'm in kinetic, but watch what happens. I can't really modify it. Yeah, the text box is highlighted, but I can't necessarily easily work with it without just like backing everything up. Uh, so it is possible to do it, but there's really kind of an easier way, and it, it's a little tool that not a lot of people know about called the selection pane. So if you go to the home tab and then over here to select and open up what's called the selection pane, what you'll see is that everything, every element that's on this slide is going to show up over here and it's going to have a little eyeball here. Okay, When you want to start working with individual elements and modifying them, See, I don't really want to move this text because that might mess up the animation that's built in. But you can just start unchecking stuff. See, everything's starting to disappear here. Okay, can I modify that now? Yeah. Now it's easy. Now I can modify it. Okay, and then don't forget to turn everything back on once you, you know, get done fiddling around with stuff. But what you'll find is that a lot of times it's very hard to, like, grab something and, and move it because things will be on top of each other and stuff like that. It is so much easier when you want to work with an individual element 
on a slide that has a whole bunch of stuff on it to open up the selection pane and find just what you want. Okay, and then another tip that I like to do is if I'm working on a project that's going to require a bunch of modifications, uh, let me just click on this guy here. So this is this little starburst graphic. Well, it, it's kind of hard to tell by the description picture eight. So what I'll do in a more complex project is I will rename this stuff. There's my red star. Here's my blue star. So now, you know, I have all the elements and they're all named and that good kind of stuff. Susan says she thinks that's her favorite thing that she's learned from me, the selection pane. Yeah, selection pane rocks. It's the bomb. And again, it kind of slays me that people try to do these complex slide presentation videos and they don't even know how to use this. Well, gosh, it must just be a frustrating nightmare for folks to try to figure out how to get at and modify some of this stuff. Oh, dear. It's crazy.